Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the LLD series. So in this video, we are going to look at the observer design pattern. Just in case if you haven't checked out my other videos on this LLD series, you can go and check it out on my channel. Also you can check out my graph playlist series where I've covered different topics that are asked in graph coding interviews. Okay, now let's look at the observer design pattern. Now, obviously I'm going to explain uh, you the code and you know, walk you through the code. But before that, first of all, let's take a real life example and understand why do we need an observer pattern in the first place? Okay, so let's consider that, you know, we have a weather station, right? Now, what does this weather station do? Now, let's say there are some IoT sensors who are constantly, you know, keeping track of the climate conditions around it. For example, we can go ahead with two parameters that is temperature and humidity. So let's say there are some IoT sensors, right, installed at various places, right? And these IoT sensors are constantly recording the temperature and humidity of those places and sending it to the weather stations, okay? Now, what this weather station is doing is, it is simply keeping track of two things. One is the temperature and one is the humidity, right? Now, let's say this weather station has a method, set parameters, that takes in two arguments, that is the temperature and the humidity. So, whenever the IoT sensors has to notify the weather station or it senses any temperature change or a climate or a humidity change, it calls this method of the weather station and uh, it in turn updates this temperature and the humidity within the weather station. So now you might ask, okay, you have the temperature and the humidity that has been captured by the IoT sensors and sent out to the weather station and it, and it keeps, uh, keeps those updates to states uh, within that weather station class. But what will it do with this temperature and humidity? So just to answer your question, the weather station is keeping track of the temperature and humidity sent by the IoT sensors, but actually it has no idea what to do with it. So there comes different systems that knows how to utilize those temperature and humidity according to the use cases. Now let's say there is a system, system one, that is entrusted with the task of, let's say displaying current conditions or displaying current temperature and also humidity. Also, let's say that there is another system, let's call it system two, that is entrusted with the task of, let's say, displaying average temperature based on the past records. So clearly you can understand this weather station has the data, but it doesn't know what to do with the data. And there is there are two systems that doesn't have the data with them, but they know exactly what to do with the data. So that's where observer design pattern comes into the picture. Now, how does it work? So the IoT sensors updates the weather stations ki, hey, there's a temperature and humidity change, so do update your state. But now the weather station doesn't know what to do with it. But the, these two systems, they know what to do with it, right? But they don't have the parameters. So what this weather station has to do, this weather station has to, whenever there's a, there's a, like, a, like a change in temperature and humidity, it has to update the system one and the system two, right? That, hey, there's a weather change, there's a temperature and a climate change. So I'm giving you the data. Now you want to, now you do whatever you want to do. So system one will say, okay, I will display the current temperature and humidity. And the system two will say, okay, I will display, I will calculate the average temperature based on the current temperature and I will display the average, right? So in our context, this weather station is what we call as the subject or I prefer to call it observables because it is a more intuitive name. It's what, that's what I feel. But if you read about this observable design pattern, you will find this term subject being used in most of the places. But again, I prefer to call it observable. That's fine. No fight with the names. And what are these system one and two being called? They are called the observers. Now why observable and why observers, right? You see that weather station, it is the observable, it is being observed on. Who are observing these weather stations? That is these systems are observing these weather stations constantly because it needs to see, hey, that is there any change in the data, right? Is there any change in the data? And if so, if so, they will get those data and perform some calculations on them. So the observers, that is the system one and system two, they're observing on the weather station, right? So just now, to put this in context and give a more generic definition to this pattern, we will say we have an observable or a subject who has some states, right? And whenever there is a change of state, it needs to notify, it needs to notify its 
uh, the observers, right? And this observers will take the states and they will perform their respective calculations based on those states. So there are two things, right? Observable or the subject and the observers. Now, how will the observable know that which of the observers he needs to notify, right? Therefore, these observers should somehow subscribe to the observables, right? Just as you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which you anyway don't. Uh, but again, uh, jokes apart, so the observers, what they need to do is, they need to tell the observable that, hey, I want to subscribe to you. So please subscribe me to a list so that next time, when the, whenever there is a state change, you can notify me, right? So for that reason, for that reason, the observable, it, it exposes two methods, right? One is the register observer and one is the remove observer just in case you want to, you know, uh, remove the observer. So it, it takes an observer and this case also it takes an observer, right? And another method that it needs to have is the notify method, right? That will notify all the observers, all the subscribed observers. So basically you can consider that it will, it will have maintain a list, right? A list of observers, right? And it will have the, and it will have these three methods, register observer, remove observer, and notify observer. Uh, notify observers that will notify all the observers whenever there is a change of state, right? And it will notify this list of observers, right? And on the other hand, for the observers, they need to just have one method that is the update method. So whenever, whenever the observable will want to notify each of its observers, it will call its update method, right? And in this update method, the observer observers can get those parameters and they can perform the calculations based on that, right? So this is the overview. Uh, now, what we generally do is, uh, whenever uh, like we see that, okay, this system has a behavior or a certain behavior of an, where an observable design pattern can fit in, right? Uh, we tend to define an interface that is the observable interface and the observers interface because all observers, all observers should have this update method and all observables or the subjects should have these three methods, right? So that is where the design pattern comes into the picture. And that is why we have interfaces because interfaces, you know, serves as a contract. So all observables should sign this following contract that, hey, if you are behaving as an observable, you should like implement these three methods, right? And also if you're an observer, then you should implement at least the update method. Then only you are like, acting as an observable and an observer. I think it's pretty uh, much for now. Now let's quickly jump into the code and see and get a walkthrough and get a hang of the solution, right? And then we will discuss a couple of points on this design pattern and then we will end this, end this video. Okay, so first of all, we have this observable interface that has the three methods, as I mentioned, register observer takes in an observer, remove observer that takes in an observer and notify observers, right? Uh, then we have the observer interface that has an update method and it takes temperature and humidity in this case. Now we have the weather station that is actually an observable or a subject. So it implements the observable. And as I mentioned, it will maintain the list of observers, right? It will maintain the two parameters that is temperature and humidity in this case, right? So in the constructor, we are simply instantiating this observers array list. Now let's look at three main methods that is a register observer, remove observer and the notify observers. So in the register observer, it is simply checking key whether this observer, it already has the observer. If it doesn't already have the observer with it, it will add it to the list. Remove is also the same thing. It is removing it from the list and notify observer is basically where we are uh, for every observer, right? For every observer, we are calling the update method, passing the parameters of temperature and humidity, right? So that those observers can perform the calculations. And then th th this is this parameters change, which is you can consider that as the IoT sensors are going to call uh, updating the temperature and humidity. And whenever the parameters are changed, it is the weather stations or it is the observables job to notify observers, right? So whenever there is a set, uh, change of state, right? As it happens over here, it should notify the observers and that's where this notify observer method comes into picture. Now let's look at the two systems that are subscribed to this weather station, okay? So one is the uh, average temperature display that displays the average temperature and one is the current weather conditions display, right? That also implements the observer and the average, uh, like both of them are observers. So they implement the observer and as a result, they have to override this update method, right? 
But before that, let's look uh, at their constructor. So inside the constructor, we we will we are basically passing the observable uh, like the observable uh, object, right? Because this this observable needs to register this current system right or this current class right because it is subscribing to that particular observable so for the current weather conditions display to subscribe to the weather station it sh this weather station object needs to be passed right and then using this register method register observer method in the weather station class that we just saw now it will register this particular class so basically in the weather station class this current weather conditions display will be added to that observers list right similarly we will do the same thing for the average temperature display so in the average temperature display we are also passing the weather station that is basically the observable and we are registering it using this method now let's see the update function so update function is just very simple it is just updating its own temperature and humidity and then it is displaying and displaying is basically we are displaying the current weather conditions and average temperature display is basically we are maintaining the sum and the total for calculating the average it updates the sum and the total temperatures and it just displays the result right now let's look at the driver class the driver class is basically very simple uh, we are creating a weather station then we are creating these two systems where we are passing the observable that is the weather station class over here right weather station object over here then let's consider that the iot's iot sensors are calling this weather station dot parameters change with a temperature 20 and humidity of 10 right then we have a delay then we again call this parameters change and again there is a delay so what we are doing is we are not calling anything we are not calling anything on the observers we are calling only one method only one set change or a parameters change method on the observable and all the other observers will be notified and we are going to see that right now so let's run this code and see you can see that first your current weather condition uh, was printed, right? Also, your average weather tem uh, tem average uh, temperature was printed. Then there was a delay, right? And then this got printed, right, for two records. And then the again there was a delay, and this got printed. So you can understand that I just called the set change of the parameters change method of the weather station, and these observers display method was were being called because the update method were being were being called. So this is pretty much it about the observer design pattern on a very high level. Now there are a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, there are a couple of open-ended questions that might exist in your mind. So let's say you can say that, uh, what if I want to, you know, store this observable over here? You can do that. You are free to do that. You can like maybe uh, like uh, create a separate state observable and you can store it here, right? Now let's say that what are we doing over here? From the weather station, whenever you want to notify an observer, you are passing the temperature and the humidity, right? Now. Don't you think? Well, let's say let's say there's a system. Let's say let's say, let's say this average temperature, right? It doesn't needs the humidity. It doesn't needs the humidity. It only needs the temperature. But since we have defined since we have defined the interface in such a way that we have to pass both temperature and humidity, therefore, in spite of the fact that the average temperature sys uh, display system uh, not needing the humidity, it still has it still is getting the humidity, right? So some extra information is getting passed. This is because this is because the weather station is pushing the data within quotes pushing the data right pushing the parameters to every observers and since this update function is coming from an interface it needs to have same contract but again you have to understand not all observers will have the will need the same amount of data instead you can you might argue that what we could have done is we could have you know like made this uh update function to be blank right i mean not passing any parameter then inside these two current weather conditions display and have like inside these two observer class we could have created a uh, like we could have basically made a uh, private observable observable like we could have just created this state right and we could have done something like this this dot observable is equals to observable right and instead of getting this temperature and humidity i would have added i should have added in the weather station i should have added a getter method for this temperature and humidity so that using this observable object i would have simply used the observable dot get temperature observable dot get humidity so in just in case if the average temperature displayed didn't need the humidity it wouldn't have called the get method it would have just called the um uh like the get temperature method so instead of a weather station passing the data right the observables right will are taking the data using the get method call but again there are pros and cons in both of these ways right uh, so basically it's it's basically either you're pushing the data 
or you're polling the data, like either the observables are polling the data or the observers are pushing the data, right? There can also be an argument that we are calling multiple get method calls to get multiple data. What if there are a lot of data, right? Also, you know, uh, there can be another argument where let's say, what if the parameters, let's say I want to add one more parameter apart from temperature and humidity, right? Let's, uh, and um, uh, then in that case, I have to like uh, go and change the update method and the update contract because I need, I now have, I need to pass one more parameter. So there would be you no know, change in code. So there are different open-ended questions that do exist and there is no right and wrong answer over here. It is basically, com it is completely dependent on the use case you're trying to solve. So Java has an observer API, very similar to this observer design pattern where you can uh, choose uh, whether you want to like go for a push or you go and to go for a poll. Right, but I'm not going to cover that because it is like uh, it like that would be a digression from the main video. My main aim was to like uh, make you understand about the observer design pattern, and these are open-ended questions that you need to like read about a bit and also uh, uh, f like choose the best option that would be best suited for your use case. So that's it for the video, guys. If you have liked this video, uh, don't forget to press the like button and don't forget to share it among your friends, among your community. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because the numbers really motivated me a lot to make such videos, make such content. I made a lot of other uh, content on design uh, patterns as well as LLDs. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.